finish now for second video uh, today's second video so this uh, trigonometric uh, relationship is very important so here theta how it is related to xi and square root of 1 by n as xi square so here as you can see that the cos theta xi is equal to uh, yeah cos theta yes so in the previous problem last problem uh, we are getting uh, we are psi is equal to cos theta when uh, yeah theta here is 0 degree so it is equal to 1 then other uh, roots s is equal to minus 4.5 plus or minus j 5.38 theta is tan inverse of the imaginary parts divided by a real part it is equal to 50.08 so other explanation I think that I had given in the previous so we will go to the next problem that is 521 so the characteristic characteristic equation of the system in different equation for uh, in the in differential equation form is x double dot that means d square x by dt square minus k plus 2 x dot that means dx by dt plus 2k plus 10 into x is equal to 0 and find the values of k for which the system is one stable second limitedly stable and unstable and b for stable case for which value of k is the system under damped and over damped now taking the laplace transform of the given characteristic equation this is the characteristic equation it is not in laplace uh, s domain so you have to form this into s domain so s double dash uh, d square x by dt square we can uh, write it as s square into x of s minus k plus 2 uh, here one differentiator so s into x of s here 2k plus 10 into x of s is equal to 0 now you have to rearrange this then you are getting x square minus k plus 2 s plus uh, 2k plus 10 is equal to 0 here x of s you are taking constant then the character equation becomes like this now the stability conditions you have to know, uh, do so for that you have to form that uh, root table so you form the root table the highest order is 2 so it is very easy now the condition for the stable system all the elements in the first column of the root table should be positive so here uh, minus k plus 2 should be greater than 0 because it indicates that k should be less than minus 2 and second condition 2k plus 10 should be greater than 0 it indicates that k should be greater than minus 5 so minus 5 is less than minus 2 so k should be greater than minus 5 and less than minus 2 so this is the condition for stability now the system to be limitedly stable in that case minus k plus 2 should be 0 that means one row if it is stable uh, you can understand that that there are poles on the imaginary axis that is a single pair of non-repeated poles on imaginary axis then it is limitedly stable or if the poles on the um, origin of uh, S plane then also it is limitedly stable for that we will put minus k plus 2 is equal to 0 so that means this should be 0 and remaining also 0 so when you are calculating that, that k minus k plus 2 is equal to k is equal to minus 2 or uh, and and 2 k, 2 k plus 1 10 is equal to 0 in that case k is equal to minus 5 either k is equal to minus 2 yeah as well as k is equal to minus 5 the system is limitedly stable for the system to be uh, uh, to be unstable um, any one of this uh, this is already a positive you cannot uh, consider it but any one of this 
should be uh, negative that means there should be at least one sign change this is positive so this should be minus or this should be minus if you are taking like that minus k plus 2 should be less than 0 so k, k is greater than minus 2 or 2k plus 1 10 uh, should be less than 0 or k less than minus 5 this is the condition for uh, stability okay uh, this is the condition for uh, stability okay uh, k should be greater than minus 2 and k should be less than minus 5 now when you are looking into this characteristic equation you know that it is a second order quadratic equations so the roots of the characteristic equation can be found by s1 s2 is, is equal to minus b minus b so here minus is a so it will become plus minus b plus or minus root of b square minus uh, 4 yeah b square minus 4 ac b square minus 4 ac divided by 2 now for critically damped case what is the condition is whatever there in the root that should be uh, 0 critically damped case this should be 0 that means when you are this should be 0 k is you are getting it as when it is 0 you will get a k as 8.32 or uh, minus 4.32 but you know that in the previous year, um, previous condition the stability condition is k should be between minus 5 and minus 2 so it is a negative value so here you got a one positive value and a negative value so you can understand that when k is 8.32 it is unstable because it, can, it cannot happen so when uh, minus 4.32 it is between minus 5 and minus 2 so what you can say that uh, yeah so for critical damping critical damping damping uh, means k should be minus 4 plus 32 what is critically damping means the amplitude is decreasing and uh, it is coming to zero that means the poles are on the left half of s plane then that is known as critically damped now k okay, should be this this is the condition for critically damped so under damped critically damped means this is the minimum conditions that means critically damped under damped case that means yeah critically damped means uh, yeah critically damped case means yes it is almost uh, not decreasing the amplitude is uh, no, almost uh, same under damped means the amplitude is decreasing as the sin sinusoidal signal is proceeding or over damped means amplitude is increasing so under damped case is you can see that k is between minus 4.32 to minus 2 and over damped case is k is minus 4.3 to minus 5 okay so yes so you can understand that now <laughs> there are uh, um, yeah absolute stability and relatively relative stability in absolute stability what we can find is whether it is stable or not we already discussed relative stability means whether the how much stability is or some more deep in stability that is known as relative stability so uh, this part is very easy to understand 
before that you can see that relatively stability for various root location in s plane so here this is s plane this is the imaginary axis and uh, this will be the real axis uh, this side is right half of plane this will be left half of plane and as you know that um, uh, whatever the response is coming on the what are the if the poles are coming on the left half of s plane it is stable when you are checking whether it is left or right if it is left you can see that it is absolute stability that you just check whether it is stable or not that is known as absolute stability now if you are finding how much stability then it is known as relative stability so here as you can see that there are two poles on the left half of s plane the first pole is very near to the imaginary axis second pole is little far so when you are observing the response the the uh, decaying um, it is exponentially decreasing the response corresponding response is time domain response is exponentially decreasing here also exponentially decreasing but you can see if you go far from imaginary axis the time required to reach the signal to zero is less compared to this it is this required more time to reach reach to zero here it requires less time to reach us to zero so you can see that if the poles are away from the zero so it, it is more uh, stable stability is more because time required to uh, settle the response to zero is faster than the other now we will see another two example so it is not the poles are not on the imaginary axis there are two complex conjugate poles in the left half of s plane and you can see that when you are comparing one one pair is near to um, imaginary axis compared to other okay now the response is the damping here it the damping is not fast as this as you can see this is the sinusoidal signal is reducing faster than this so the poles are going the pair poles are going away from the imaginary axis so the damping is more so that you can understand from this diagram now once the system is found to be stable the relative stability of the system can be determined quantitatively by finding the settling time of the dominant roots of the characteristic equations the system can be determined quantitatively by finding the settling time how fast it is going to settle since the settling time is inversely proportional to the real part of the dominant roots settling time is since the settling time is inversely proportional to the real part of the dominant root so for example you can see that this is the real part in this case this is the real part and this is this the, the side is imaginary okay and you know that it is inversely proportional to the real part real part is from here to here what you are getting this is minus some 4 uh, this will be plus j something here it is minus this may be minus 6 so you can understand that you can see understand that since the settling time is inversely proportional to the real part of dominant roots the relative stability can be specified by recurring that all the roots of the characteristic equation b more negative than a certain value so yeah so relative stability can be specified by 
requiring that all the roots of the character equation be more negative than a certain value that is all the roots must lie in the left of s is equal to minus s1 minus s1 so s1 the magnitude of s1 is greater than 0 so if s is equal to minus it is left of this so suppose if we are telling more if we are considering here one value that is s1 okay minus s1 so if s is less than this or more negative than this or left of this then we can say that uh, yeah all the roots lie to the left of s is s main now the character characteristic equation of the system under study is then modified by shifting the origin of the s plane by s plane to s is equal to minus sigma 1 so you know that the, the, this inverse this will be uh, shifted instead of you are uh, checking with the uh, zero uh, you can take some more more negative and if you can check that whether the poles are or poles are left to that okay then you can see the uh, see what, when you are observing it if you are going to left more the stability is increasing more stable okay so uh, if you are taking if you are checking with the zero uh, at from the uh, if you are checking related to the origin you can see that uh, uh, okay it is a uh, stable but if you are checking with the relative to s is equal to minus 2 then you can say that it is more stable than checking with the with the respect to s is equal to uh, 0 it's s is equal to the 0 so that way so shift modified by shifting the origin of the s plane to s is equal to minus sigma 1 by substitution is equal to s is equal to z minus sigma 1 if the new character equation in s satisfies the root criterion it implies that all the roots of the original characteristic characteristic equations are more negative than minus delta 1 so if you are doing like this yeah uh, you are shifting the shifting the origin of the s plane to instead of here you are shifting the origin to somewhere here s is equal to minus delta 1 then you are doing the uh, the new character equation of in z you are taking another term z satisfies the root criterion it implies that all the root roots of the original character equations are more negative than minus sigma 1 okay so this is this paragraph is very important all of you try to read it so we will do the problem this is more simple than the previous so you can easily understand this now so check whether the roots of the equation s cube plus 5 s square plus 25 s plus 30 this is a characteristic equation have real parts more negative than minus 1 or not real parts real parts parts is as, as already we discussed that the settling time is inversely proportional to the real part of the dominant roots settling time if it is uh, the settling time is uh, the relative stability of the system can be determined Quantitative by finding the settling time on the dominant dominant roots of the character system since the settling time is inversely proportional to the real part of the dominant root the relative stability can be specified by uh, recurring that all the roots of the character equation be more negative than the certain value so the period uh, previous paragraph now 
to check whether all the roots of the given characteristic equation have uh, real parts more than minus 1 or not shift the origin of s plane to s is equal to minus by minus 1 by substituting s is equal to z minus 1 in the characteristic equations so what you have to simply replace s by z raised to minus 1 then you have to rearrange modified characteristic equation you got it as z raised to 3 2 z square 18 is z plus 9 is equal to 0 form the root array the same same similar way now when you are observing it all the elements in the first columns are positive so you can say that yeah all the elements of the first column of the root array is positive this indicates that the roots of the characteristic equation is z lies in the left half of s plane which implies that all the roots of the original characteristic equation in s lies to the left of s is equal to minus 1 in z you can see that it is uh, all the roots are or all the roots lies in the left half of z plane but the z plane we obtain by substituting s is equal to z raised to minus 1 then the original if when the roots of the original character equation s lies left of s is equal to minus 1 in s plane that is all the roots of the character equation in s have real parts more negative than minus 1 so very easily you can understand now determine the range of value of of k that for k greater than 0 such that the characteristic equation this is the characteristic equations uh, has the roots more than more negative than s is equal to minus 1 so for that again what you need to do s is equal to z raised to minus you have to substitute it okay and after substituting you will get a new characteristic equations and uh, forming the root array you got like this okay in order to become this z in z plane all the roots are on the left half of z plane what you have to do is all the terms in the first column should be positive that means 3k should be greater than 0 so k should be greater than 0 now 3k square plus uh, 6k minus 4 should be greater than 0 so k should be greater than 4.527 so the range of values of k for the roots of the character should have real parts more than negative more than negative than minus 1 is uh, yeah k should be greater than 0 and k should be greater than 0.527 so this will be more positive than this so you can say that if you are a intersection of these two conditions then you can see that k should be greater than uh, uh, 0.527 and it should be less than infinity now determine the poles pole nearest to the imaginary axis at least 0.75 minus 0.75 that means left away from the imaginary axis for the system given by the characteristic equation determine if the pole nearest to the imaginary axis that means whether the means you know that when you are taking any uh, transfer functions the denominator when you are equating to 0 that is characteristic equations we are analyzing the characteristic equation to consider that that means denominator gives the pole location so when you are analyzing the characteristic equations you can see that whether the poles on the left half of s plane or right half if it is right half it is unstable if it is on the imaginary axis with the non repeated roots then you can see it is marginally stable if it is pure if it is perfectly left of s plane you can see that it is stable now in this question what they ask 
determining if the pole nearest to the imaginary axis at least minus points away away from the imaginary axis for the system for the system given of the char uh, characteristic equation so this is the characteristic equation you have to see that uh, whether uh, the uh, poles are uh, poles distance at least minus point a seven five that means it is uh, left to so suppose uh, when you are looking at this is the s plane so here j omega this is sigma so s is equal to uh, sigma plus j omega now this is you can see that point uh, seven five minus this side is minus so at least uh, minus, uh, the poles suppose if poles are here okay suppose these poles are here you can say that it is at least uh, 0.75 minus 0.75 away from the budget axis but if the poles are here it is not so we have to check that we, so for that uh, you have to uh, substitute instead of s you have to substitute z minus 0.75 then you have to modify it you will get a new character situation like this now what you, what you need to do is you have to uh, form the root table when you are finding the root table of new characteristic equations you can see that there are there are sign changes here one sign change here another sign change here another sign change so three sign changes so there are three signs hence there are three roots of the character equation having the real parts less negative than 0.75 it is when you are analyzing you can see that the roots are right of this three roots are right of this line 0.7 minus 0.75 okay that is the answer now the last question in this unit determine whether the largest time constant of the characteristic equation given below is greater than less than or equal to one second so here as you can see that s raised to 3 plus 4 s square plus 6 x s plus 4 is equal to so this is the characteristic equation now time constant associated with the characteristic equation is time constant tau is equal to the previous chapter we dealt with this 1 divided by xi omega n and we are considering it as 1 second we are first we will take 1 second so xi omega n is equal to 1 then so we have to determine whether the roots of the characteristic equations xi omega n is equal to 1 that means here this psi omega n is equal to 1 that means um, yeah this distance is 1 so what modification you need to do here is in your uh, characteristic equation change s is equal to z raised to 1 because psi omega n is equal to 1 so we have to determine whether the roots of the characteristic equation have uh, real parts greater than less than or equal to minus 1 that is greater than or less than or equal to 1 greater than less than or equal to 1 according to your minus 1 for this put s is minus 1 in the transform of the characteristic equation of z plane we are making s is equal to z raised to 1 then you are modifying the equation you are got you are getting like this now when you are analyzing when you are analyzing this uh, new characteristic equation the root table you got like this in the root table you can see that as z raised to 1 all the elements become 0 so it is difficulty 2 that means uh, uh, that means you know that uh, due to the present uh, that means 
the present characteristic equation this is the present characteristic equation in this the roots are not on the left of uh yeah s is equal to minus 1 s is equal to uh, no the real parts of s that is not less than minus 1 it is some are some poles are on right of uh right of this uh xi omega n minus 1 a uh, xi omega n that is 1 that means the real part sigma is equal to minus 1 now in order to complete this what we need to do is all the elements in the z or zero so difficult to erase as replace z raised to 1 rows by the coefficient of first derivative of the auxiliary equation the first derivative of the uh, uh, auxiliary equation formed by using the coefficient of z raised to 2 uh, so when you are making it this will become z raised to 1 into yeah 1 into z raised to square plus 1 is equal to 0 now when you are deriving it uh, when you are deriving you are getting 2 z plus 0 is equal to 0 now uh, when you are putting the coefficient that means 2 and remaining it is 0 if you are extending the next element is become 1 looking at the modified root table all the elements in the first column of the root are in the same sign so there are no roots of this modified character equation to the right of but when you are modifying it yeah there are when this is happening root difficulty it can be either yeah yes a difficulty to normally not on the right it will be on the imaginary axis you recollect it what i told previous little, little correction is required that is why when there is a difficulty to normally complex conjugate poles on the real axis can be uh, real axis also and it can be on the imaginary axis also so that so once more looking at the modified root table all the elements in the first column of the root array are of the same sign so there are no roots of this modified character equation to the right of s is equal to minus 1 because all it is positive then there won't be any right if it is some sign changes you can say that there may be right of s is equal to minus 1 that is z is equal to 0 s is minus 1 since there is a row of 0 the roots are in imaginary axis at s is equal to minus 1 in fact the roots are at is at a s is equal to minus 1 plus j1 and s is equal to minus 1 minus j1 so the largest time constant of the character equation is equal to 1 second so largest okay largest time constant because as you can see that the time constant is related to uh, time constant is related to 1 by xi omega n and xi omega n you are getting is like this so the largest time constant is it is minus 1 okay this is minus 1 the largest time constant okay the largest time constant is minus 1 the time other time constants are you can see it will be more negative than this less than or greater than one second but the largest time constant is one second now how you got this uh, s is equal to minus one plus j1 and uh, s is equal to minus one minus j1 so so that all 
you have to recollect it from the previous problems